Alan Turing, a name synonymous with genius, the mind that cracked the Enigma code and pioneered computer science. But behind his groundbreaking achievements lay a man often misunderstood and enigmatic. Some believe that this brilliant mind might have experienced the world in a way that's familiar to millions today. Autism, a neurodevelopmental condition that affects how one perceives, interacts, and communicates with the world. Could it be that Turing, with his unique quirks and unparalleled focus, displayed characteristics of the autism spectrum? Today, we journey into the mind of Alan Turing, exploring the tantalizing clues and observations that suggest a perspective of the world that, while different, led to innovations that changed the course of history. Join us as we dive deep asking the question, did the father of modern computing view the world through the lens of autism? Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. In the annals of history, there are names that resonate with innovation, brilliance, and mystery. Among them stands Alan Turing, a figure whose genius rippled through the domains of mathematics, cryptography, and computer science. He loomed large in my own computer science education years before many of his achievements were even declassified. He broke the impenetrable Enigma code and laid the groundwork for the very device you might be watching this on. But as with many historical luminaries, Turing's persona was as complex as his groundbreaking algorithms. Behind the logical formulations, the relentless calculations, and the marathon runs was a man with idiosyncrasies that puzzled those around him. Turing was often an enigma in his own right, prompting some to wonder if he experienced the world in a way different from many of his contemporaries. Enter the realm of autism a neurodevelopmental condition influencing social communications, interactions, and often accompanied by specific intense interests. In the modern age, we've come to understand and appreciate the vast spectrum of autism, celebrating the unique ways in which neurodiverse individuals perceive and influence the world. But in Turing's era, the understanding was limited and the terminology different and the acceptance scarce. In fact, the term autism itself only dates back to papers published in 1943, and the reality is that there is no credible way to diagnose a dead person with any neurological condition, short of DNA testing, I suppose, but there's no DNA testing for autism. Still, as I read the details of Turing's life, and I saw the portrayal rendered by Benedict Cumberbatch in The Imitation Game, I became convinced that I myself share many of the same idiosyncrasies as Turing had, and most of my own can be attributed to my autism. While I hadn't defeated the Germans of late, his intense focus, singular interests, social challenges, and dedication to problem-solving that could be deemed obsessive, and I saw many parallels. As we trace the footprints of Turing's life, we find intriguing intersections of behavior, focus, and passion that align with what we now recognize as the traits of the autism spectrum. The quirks, the patterns, the routines, the obsessions. Could they be more than just the eccentricities of genius? Could they be indicative of Turing's neurodiversity? The journey we're embarking on is not to posthumously diagnose or label, but to explore, to appreciate the nuanced tapestry of neurodiversity in humans and how it may have shaped some of the greatest minds in history. The first place I started with was interviews of the cast from the imitation game, and I was pretty disheartened with what I found. In one exchange, a reporter asked Kira Knightley if she believed that Turing could have been autistic, and she's quite taken aback by it, as if she was either nonsensical or insulting. She then turns to Cumberbatch, who portrayed Turing, and he doubles down on the notion that any suggestions of autism are misplaced. Turing's a very strange character in many ways. I suppose we'd now say autistic. Did you come to a conclusion as to what his character was? Um, I, I didn't think autistic. Um, I didn't get that from it. Um, I didn't get that from what you played. Were you playing autistic? No. No, I didn't think so. But when even the producers got involved in pushing back on the autistic conjecture, I was left to wonder why they were pushing back so hard. Turing himself once said that sometimes it is the people no one can imagine anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. Did this iconic figure who reshaped the world of technology view the world through the lens of autism? And as we embark on this exploration into Alan Turing's life, it is essential to approach with curiosity and an open mind. While we'll never have definitive answers, the clues and patterns that emerge from Turing's behavior and experiences paint an intricate portrait that beckons closer examination. 
To better understand the man behind the legend and to contemplate the potential intersections with autism, we'll be delving into six distinct facets of Turing's life, the challenges and nuances of his social interactions and how they set him apart from his peers, his remarkably focused interests that went way beyond mere academic pursuits into realms of deep passion and obsession, the routines and habits that he clung to which provided order in a world of chaos, Subtle physical behaviors which, though often overlooked, offer a lens into his world and cognitive processes. The sensory peculiarities that defined his personal choices and preferences, giving us a glimpse into how he might have experienced the world around him. And finally, his innate abilities. Those exceptional talents that set him head and shoulders above the rest, hinting at the depths and diversity of his cognitive landscape. Each of these facets provides a puzzle piece, together building a more holistic understanding of Turing, both as the genius we celebrate and as the enigmatic individual that he was. Let's dive deeper. Number 1. Social Challenges Alan Turing, by many first-hand accounts, displayed notable difficulties in interpersonal interactions. His contemporaries often depicted him as an isolated figure, not necessarily by any choice, but due to an apparent struggle in understanding and navigating the nuances of social situations. Not unlike myself as a young man, he was very literal and direct in his communication, and Turing sometimes missed the subtleties or undertones of casual conversations. This directness, while beneficial in his scientific endeavors, often led to unintentional misunderstandings or feelings of awkwardness among his peers. People on the autism spectrum can similarly struggle with the fluidity of social interaction. For them, directness is not a chosen method of communication, but a default mode. They often find comfort in clear, straightforward dialogue. There are numerous historical anecdotes and testimonies that paint Turing as somebody who approached many life situations with a straightforwardness that was, at times, seen as uncouth or at least unusual for his era. His bluntness, combined with a somewhat aloof demeanor, made him an enigmatic figure in social situations. Number two, focused interests. From an early childhood, Turing displayed an intense, unwavering fascination with numbers, codes, and ciphers. This profound attention to specific subjects, diving into them with unparalleled passion, is often associated with autism. People with autism can sometimes develop hyper-focused areas of interests. These interests can be so absorbing that they overshadow other activities or topics. Turing's commitment to his areas of interest wasn't just a trait of academic dedication, but resembled an almost compulsive need to understand and dissect problems, patterns, and systems. His pioneering works in computing and code-breaking weren't solely products of genius, but also of an obsessive, intricate examination of the subjects at hand. Number 3. Routines and Habits Alan Turing, like many people with autism, found solace in routines and specific habits. There is the well-documented instance of Turing chaining his mug to a radiator to ensure it wouldn't be misplaced or taken. This might seem eccentric to some, but for Turing and possibly others on the spectrum, having a set routine and knowing that specific items are in their designated places provides a sense of security and order in a world that feels pretty chaotic otherwise. It's like always knowing your favorite spot on the sofa will be free for you. Such habits can serve as grounding mechanisms, allowing individuals to feel a sense of control and predictability in their environment. Number four, physical behavior. Repetitive behaviors, sometimes referred to as stimming in the context of autism, are common coping mechanisms to deal with overwhelming situations, emotions, or sensory inputs. Turing was observed on multiple occasions humming to himself or singing to himself while engrossed in thought. And these actions, while possibly perceived as just quirks or oddities by observers, could be Turing's way of self-regulating his emotions or of focusing his attention by using a stim. Many on the autism spectrum engage in similar repetitive movements or sounds to calm themselves, focus, or navigate distressing situations. Sensory Sensitivities It has been documented that Turing was particularly sensitive about his food. There's a reason my book, Secrets of the Autistic Millionaire, features chicken nuggets on the cover. And by the way, if you're looking for information on how to live a successful life on or with somebody on the spectrum, check out the free sample chapter on Amazon at the link in the video description. Is everything I know now that I wish I'd known back then. Having very particular specific dietary habits might not just be indicative of personal preferences, but could also suggest sensory sensitivities often witnessed in individuals with autism. Sensory sensitivities can manifest in a myriad of ways, from an aversion to specific textures, sounds, or even tastes. For someone with autism, those sensory experiences can be magnified. That can make seemingly mundane situations intense or unbearable. 
Those lumps in your grandma's gravy that kind of annoyed you were a little gross as a kid would cause someone with autism to simply be unable to eat it because the sensation of that weird texture gets multiplied many fold. Turing's distinct dietary patterns could have been a manifestation of these heightened sensory experiences, steering away from foods that he found sensorially overwhelming. Innate ability, number six. Prodigious talents or splinter skills are occasionally observed in autistic individuals. In the bad old days, they called such people with narrow but exceptional skills autistic savants, a term that has now fallen out of regular use. These skills are areas where the individual demonstrates exceptional abilities far above their overall level of functioning in other domains. Turing's incredible abilities in logic and mathematics can be seen in this light. While he was undoubtedly a genius, his specific aptitudes resembled the exceptional talents sometimes observed in individuals with autism. His capacity to view problems from unique perspectives, break them down systematically, and find solutions that eluded others could be linked, in part, to neurological variances consistent with autism. In exploring these points, it's crucial to reiterate that these are observations and speculations based on historical accounts and are not definitive diagnoses by any stretch. The complexity of human behavior, especially in historical figures like Turing, means that any posthumous analysis should be approached with respect and caution. So what do you think? Do you believe Turing could have been on the spectrum, or am I just seeing what I want to see where I want to see it? Perhaps, having autism myself, I am too close to the problem. So let me know in the video comments as I really do make an effort to read every one. Remember that I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so if you enjoyed today's episode, I'd be honored if you consider subscribing to my channel. Do make sure to turn on personal notifications if you want to see my future videos. Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, I'll see you next time right here in Dave's Garage.